What inspired you to write poetry? Well, for me, it's happened quite simply. I was a volunteer in the drop-in centre in Cairo, and a lady came in one day to a small group of us and asked would any of us be interested in writing poetry. So a number of us put her hands up, myself included, and the following week she came in to us and placed a number of objects on the table. And of course then she said off you go, get inspired by what she'd placed on the table, is what she meant. And so therefore I got my first two poems within that time called The Lighthouse and Spring is Coming. Anyone who challenged or encouraged you to write? Looking back now, I would say the main person that encouraged me every step of the way and challenged me was John McDarby. And how I got to know John was, I was a volunteer in the Carla Museum. And John recognised I was beginning to write poetry and encouraged me every step of the way and told me to look for fresh ideas. And that really, those comments from John really got me going and I never give up and that's how uh, I have the book today. So I'm very grateful for John's encouragement. Looking at your at a good number of your poems, Gerard, there seems to be a connection between nature, creation and your faith in God. What helps you to fuse these three things together? Well again it was uh, it all started in my childhood. My father was a great fisherman and loved fishing and he'd go off for the day and take me with him. And there were very long days, he'd stand on the bank and he could stand there for hours hoping to catch a salmon. And I lay on the bank quite a distance away from him, I'd sit down or lie down, the sunshine would be beaming down upon us. Uh, you can imagine the scenery was beautiful altogether, the trees, you could see the breeze in the trees, the fish would break the surface of the water, some falls, small fish, to try to snatch a fly or two. And it was just the whole atmosphere to me gave me a great love for nature and creation. And regarding my faith and my love in God, I suppose really looking at the beauty of creation, I couldn't but believe that there was a creator behind it that created it all. And that's what helped me fuse these three things together. Could you read one of your favourite poems? And may we ask, who is it dedicated to? Well, I'd love to read uh, his dove-like presence. This poem, I dedicated it to my sister, Teresa, who very sadly passed away a short time ago. But Teresa was one who really loved nature, loved, being, loved the outdoors, and soaked in her surroundings. And the poem really, for me, visualizes my sister uh, walking down by the river and just taking in the scenery around her and then uh, her faith in God was very strong. So I believe that was inspiring to her. So I repeat myself by uh, giving the name of the poem again. It's called His Dove Like Presence. In the cool of the evening, when all seems quiet, I sit alone on the green grassy bank of the river barrow. I gaze upon the rippling water, a small fish break through its surface to try to snatch a fly or two. Ever so slowly, a gentle breeze moves on the branches of the trees across the river. I soak in this heavenly scenery of God's creative ability. My soul is at rest within me, and then I hear a still small voice like a gentle whisper speaking. I sense it is my creator. He says, be still and know that I am God. His voice carries a presence like a dove hovering over me. No need to be worried or weighed down with cares. He will provide all my needs. If he watches over the birds of the air and has created the world in all its beauty, how much more does he care for me? Now all is secure within my being. His peace takes over and joy floods my heart. Moving away from this tranquility, I've entered into a secret place of faith and hope, and nothing can ever separate me from my Creator's love. You've led a very, very uh, distinguished career, and at this point in time, uh, you've began to write, and it's a, a, a voyage of exploration on your part. And I'm just thinking, what happens now? Where do we go from here? 
Well, I'm continuing to write poetry. I'm kind of amazed at the small things that inspires me. And uh, even in life itself, you know, there's always fresh ideas and new things to write about. I was sitting down by the river the other day in my car and all of a sudden I looked up and there was a very old automobile pulled up beside me and a young couple got out they were just after getting married for some photographs and I went over to look at the car it was back from 1930 and all of a sudden an inspiration and a thought hit me to write a poem called The Times Are Changing and so I look forward to the future and hoping that new things will happen but you know, it's like a famous astronaut said one time when he got off the uh, rocket onto the moon and he took the first step. He said, one small step for man, one giant step for mankind. So I've never, looked, I've never looked down on the small things in life. I think they're very precious. And who knows where to lead to from here.